Welcome back. Uh, today I have a most interesting uh, session for you, I hope. Genius and the NDE. Am I going to tell you how you can become a genius? Well, I will, but I don't think you'll want to, not the ways I have to tell you. But yes, it's important, because remember, one of the things that we continually look at is transcendence. Those very wide experiences that we have, the universal experiences, are they just in the brain? Is it the noise of neurons clanking together? Or is the brain acting as a filter and there's a real transcendent universe out there that occasionally we get wider glimpses of? Now today, <coughs> excuse me, now today with genius, I want you to uh, think of the work of Dr. Trefford and we'll go and see what he's been doing because he's been studying people who are idiosavant. Uh, th this was when people were autistic but yet savants at the same time, so they're called idiosavants. In fact, we now know it's much wider than that and it occurs in different situations. There is a recent article in the Scientific American and in a moment I'll give you the URL to that. And this article again looks at different types of uh, geniuses, different types of savants and uh, explains a little bit about them but you can you can read that yourselves later. But remember it's very exciting because the brain does seem to have unlimited power learn a language, languages, many of them, or um, play the piano, cello, flute, clarinet, beautifully, understand music and compose. Uh, and uh, if this gift is there, can it be that it expresses itself in uh, in people who have uh, had the door opened a bit. Well, I'll give away a secret. One of the ways that the door opens is in fact through head injury. So we don't want that, do we? So then the other is through the NDE. And it depends how we get our NDE as to whether we want that or not. Any rate, here we are then, a genius and the NDE. Well, uh, here we are, the savant syndrome. I picked up this article on the Scientific American uh, and it gives a little bit about the savant system. But they call it something really quite interesting, brain grain. A person can instantly blossom into a savant, and no one knows why. And that's true. Let's keep in mind what I just said before, and that is that we don't know what consciousness is. We either go for it's all made in the brain, so that, that would mean that savant gets definite brain changes, and that's all, because it doesn't go beyond that. Or that in fact the brain acts as a filter and that the filter is giving the savant um, access to um, powers if you like or computing capacity or knowledge that he couldn't get uh, in any other way because it's transcendent knowledge. Now Dr. Darrell Treffert has uh, looked at the savant syndrome or the I idiot savant syndrome and argues that you can get it in people who are autistic, this means they may have brain damage at birth. Uh, they can be very, very early readers. In fact, they're reading all the Greek classics by the age of three. Or they can have the full Savant syndrome just uh, appear uh, when they are adults. And of course, they are of various kinds. So, uh, you can get the congenital savant syndrome. Ah, oh, there we have Casper. The congenital savant syndrome from a very young age. And 
Uh, this is really why I'm dealing with it today, because you can get it in response to brain injury and in response to the NDE. Uh, I first came across this change in... You, Casper. I first came across this change in... Come on, then. Uh, in um, adults uh, after brain injury when uh, I heard the story of a Dutchman who had um, a head injury. And when he came to, he found that he was telepathic and could read the minds of the doctors and nurses around him. And then you get it in NDEs. After NDEs, you get, get various gifts like uh, not being afraid of death, like uh, non-duality, which is really interested, spirituality, transcendence, uh, and so on. And then the third type of savant syndromes are those which arise quite spontaneously in adulthood, and we really don't know why they occur. They can be in math, so you can be an ace calculator, for example, you can calculate pi to um, n numbers without any errors and remember uh, music you can play and compose paint etc so it's an amazing syndrome and really very interesting and I think much underexplored now to link it up with what my interests are there is this book by Phyllis Atwater uh, it's forever angels and this is looking at people, uh, well, children, who have near-death experiences. Now, the ch child can be um, uh, in the womb. Well, how are you going to explain that on the... Uh, it's all in the brain theory, when the brain hasn't been made. Or well, early childhood, again, when the brain hasn't taken on its its mature functioning so there are a lot of interesting questions there and of course it's all going to depend on the data and uh, Atwater is an extremely good researcher and she's done two studies in childhood one with over 200 and the other with over 150 cases so she's got a lot of data and she argues then for the near-death experience as producing uh, in some children the Savant syndrome and so when they get it as I was saying memories in the womb memories during infancy and childhood they they go right back and remember we're talking NDEs so many of the experiences are transcendent then you get these special changes as the child develops and they become um, leaders in their field for example those who do reading may read the greek myths uh, by the time they're three and four i mean it's astonishing capacity and then uh this and then you of course you may get uh these special gifts arising in adolescence and in and adulthood if you have an nde so uh, what types of intelligence does Atwater say her children with NDEs when they are very, very young? Well, she gives nine different types. Uh, the first one is likes nature and animals, very close to nature and animals, which they understand. Um, of course, musicians playing an understanding of music and the calculating ones, mathematical and logical uh, uh, mind. Existential is the next one, philosophical, interested in, in profound ideas. Then interpersonal, they're, they're much more like empaths because they can sense very keenly what the other person is doing and thinking. Those that have... Um, a gifted movement system so they're terribly gracious in their movements very good at sports and um, uh, good at ballet and dancing the linguistics uh, who, who think in words mainly 
very good at languages. Uh, the interpersonal type, very good at understanding people, and they're very smart in themselves. And then uh, the spatial group, because they're good in art, 3D designs, and they have a dy dynamic imagination. So those are the nine types of intelligence that may fall out of the NDEs in early childhood. So you then have to ask the question, are the people uh, in the world that have clearly had um, NDEs in childhood or certainly brain injuries in childhood that have led to special gifts? Well, Mary Anning was struck by lightning. She lived in in Dorset and she was became extremely interested in and very good at classifying fossils because of course there are a lot there on the Dorset coast in England and she was living at the same time as uh, Charles Darwin and so there was probably a relationship between uh, the two of them in terms of uh, of changing papers and ideas. Edward de Vere, Oxford nobleman, wrote, she says, uh, Juli uh, Romeo and Juliet when he was 14, is, is de Vere Shakespeare and then you get into this whole uh, history of who Shakespeare was. But he uh, was extremely ill and developed his gifts after that. Abraham Lincoln um, was uh, very uh, w was drowned and he was fished out of the river and the water was pumped out and he had a near-death experience and as we know he went on to be a great general and politician. Albert Einstein again nearly died of an illness and had an NDE uh, and it's argued by some people, and that Walter is one, that maybe this, uh, these experiences that he had then enabled his mind to think about uh, things like relativity and, uh, and so on. Black Elk, who was uh, a, a North American Indian who led his tribe, and his serious illness and NDE and he felt that his ancestors, he could see his ancestors and hear his ancestors. And he fought the battle and beat the Americans the battle of Wounded Knee. Walter Russell, a, an amazing man, artist, a sculptor, uh, uh, had his own studio in New York and uh, two NDEs which led to the extension of his gifts. Edgar Case, you probably remember, he, he had a drowning and he was a great psychic and mystic forecasting a whole lot of events, some of which in fact have come to happen. And then finally Marcel Vogel who had pneumonia as a, as a young child and as uh, she grew up she became enormously interested in bioluminescence and how it is the chemicals fluoresce and she came uh, developed into a great chemist so there are some people in history that have had ndes leading to these well i hope you enjoyed that uh, you must admit it's absolutely totally fascinating and we were learning there that uh, you can change human memory with an NDE if it occurs in childhood, early childhood. Uh, e Phyllis Atwater even says um, right at the very earliest stages of pregnancy one can in fact get a memory from that. Now the difficulty there is of course that none of the brain structures that carry memory are in fact created, are they present but yet they do seem to have these memories. Now, is it that uh, the people who have these experiences are just imagining it? Or could it be that we are really looking at a different sort of universe?
from the one that we think we normally see. Now I know that the universe we normally see is a dual universe, uh, subject, object, me, subject, see, you, object. And the next step up is a non-dual universe, non-duality, where everything is one, where the universe is inside you. Again, is this just the neurons playing games with you? Or is it really an expansion of our consciousness into a much wider sphere? If I had to choose, I would choose the latter one of those, I think. So, uh, when you see some of these very gifted people, it's worth asking yourself, have they had a, a brain injury during birth? Have they had a near-death experience earlier on? Or have they had a head injury? Do you remember uh, the head injury was a, a common cause? And I first came across this when I uh, was told the story of a Dutchman who had a head injury. Uh, he then had an NDE, and he then had the capacity to be able to telepathically uh, contact people. Now, that then is the suggestion that a filter of some sort has been altered rather than the neurons are just playing games with each other. So, I hope you liked it, and uh, I should be interested in your responses, and uh, have a really great day, and please, please keep safe. Please do carry out the distancing rules and wear your masks and most important uh, if any of you have relatives loved ones friends who have died remember the dying process is looked after by uh, by itself and remember that you get you go into an alternate reality and in the alternate reality that's where in fact you see what is transcendent, what is good, what is loving, and that's the sort of area that you go into. Okay, so thanks very much, and bye.